very first. It is the first. And we're gonna go. Hello, welcome to the vlog. We are in New York. Just landed about half an hour ago and got ready really, really quickly. I've got hardly any makeup on and we're gonna go out and get food because I'm starving. We were up from five, half five this morning, straight to the airport, got the flight here and we've landed. It took forever to get through passport control, but we made it. And I wanna show you. So obviously we're in the room. We're staying at the Sheraton. We always stay, we stayed here last time and the time before that and I think the time before that so this is our fourth time staying here but we got the view we got the view so I want to show you also my nails this is the Empire State Building and all of Midtown is the edge over here but yeah I'll show you more in the morning oh and then Soho just down there. So exciting. Yeah, it's around like 5 p.m. now, so we're gonna go get dumplings at our usual spot. We always go here. And I'm so excited. Dumplings and noodles. And then we'll see where the night takes us. But yeah, day one. Welcome back to New York. So excited. I also wanna show you my outfit. OTD. So I'm all black as usual the white top underneath but I got leather charges on and then I got these kicks for Christmas I love them so much they're the Atsuka Tiger in black and yellow and just adds a bit of colour to an otherwise all black ensemble day one our first point of call as is every single New York trip we start off with dumplings from Shu Jiao Fu Tzu Honestly, every single time we come to New York, we have these dumplings. They are so cheap. It's like $3 for 10 to 12 dumplings and $3 for the noodles. This was our second plate of dumplings because I honestly couldn't have enough. Like, if I lived here, I would live on these dumplings every day. Unbelievable. After this, we took a walk up Fifth Avenue right to the top and got off at the plaza. It was quite nice to see the plaza without so much scaffolding for a change. And seeing it in all its glory and we did try to get in for drinks but they always close around new year's just for residents so we didn't get in this time unfortunately and couldn't keep up our yearly tradition of having a little drink at the bar but there's always next year After a little drink to warm up, we headed down Fifth Avenue, just looking at all the Christmas lights. So starting off with the Peninsula Hotel, then onto the Cartier store, which always has amazing Christmas displays. And took a walk into St. Patrick's Cathedral as well, as is always tradition to light a candle in here every single year. And then we stopped by the Saks Fifth Avenue display. I would say this is the best display I've seen in a long time, which it really pains me to say this as I do work for competitors Gucci but Dior did very very well taking over sacks and the display was lovely and then we went across to see the tree as is always a tradition to see on our first day we come around this time of year and it looked amazing as always there is no Christmas tree that compares to the Rockefeller tree And we finished the evening in Times Square before heading back to the hotel to get a night's rest before getting up early tomorrow morning for the rest of our holiday. Morning, it is day two. It is 8am on New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Eve here in New York and we're just getting ready to go off and explore the city. Um, Gonna go for breakfast this morning. Gonna go to the Great Dog, which is one of our favourites. I think it was one. I think it was the first place we ever got brunch together. It was quite cute. So yeah, we're gonna go there this morning. Go for breakfast and like take a walk up around Soho and go down to Fight Eye. Go across to where we used to live in Newport, New Jersey, 
and then come back and just explore the West Village before we go out for dinner tonight and have a lovely New Year's Eve. So yeah, we woke up to sunrise this morning at 6 30 and then had a light in. Himself went and got me a Duncan for bed. And I read some of my book and had a lovely relaxed morning watching Good Morning America and now we're off and gonna explore. So I'll take you along with me obviously. Have a lovely New Year's Eve. You'll be watching this well after New Year's Eve anyway. But yeah, I hope you had a very nice 31st of December and I hope 2024 is very, very good. And we're gonna go explore. This is outfit of the day. I kind of just threw this together very last minute. Um, but it's grey, really nice cashmere jumper from River Island. It's really nice, really, really warm as well. And then just my Zara, like wide leg mom jeans on Atsuka Tigers, which I love. And then as you all know, my perfume of choice for this trip is Glossier You. I am obsessed. I bought this when I was here last time. I love it so, so much. It just smells so good. I've been having this for years and it is my go-to. And I've seen they have a new 100ml version of it, which I need to get my hands on before the next few months. And yeah, I love it. It's so, so good, so good. We walked through Soho to head towards breakfast. We were heading to the Red Dog. I love walking through Soho in the mornings. This is mainly probably the reason we stay here. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> because Soho is just so quiet and it feels so safe all the time, I love it. And we headed across then to the West Village to the Grey Dog, which is the place where we had our first ever brunch together back in like 2019, I think it was. So we love coming here. It's so cozy and homely and it just kind of makes you feel like a true local coming here for breakfast. And the portions are always really great as well. The food's great, service is great. And yeah, it's one of our favorites. And then we headed on the path train to go back to Hoboken, New Jersey, back home. Thanks, Seth. So if you don't know, back in 2019, I moved to New York City and I lived in Newport, New Jersey. And you can see the apartments I think I'll show you them a bit later on. But yeah, behind these big tall buildings is where I lived. So we had this full skyline view of New York and we're so close to Hoboken Station and Hoboken as well. But this is where I used to walk like every single day. And obviously during the pandemic, we were around here all the time. But this is what I love about New Jersey, especially Jersey City. It gives you the best view of New York. Like I would not mind at all living over here because you have the full view of Manhattan. We went and viewed an apartment in here, I think it was back when we last, this time last year, and I did do a video on this, so I'll link it here if you wanna have a look and see what an apartment looks like and the view looks like. Although it was very foggy that day, it wasn't the best, but yeah, they have this new Newport sign, which wasn't here last time, and it just, I love this walkway so, so much, and the skyline, especially at nighttime when it's all, it's dark and the building lights are lit up and the Empire State Building is all sparkling. But this is where we used to live, so I'm gonna zoom in here. That building right there is where we used to live. So himself and I came over on J1 visas separately, didn't know each other, and I lived in this building and he lived across the way, literally in the building facing me, and that's how we met and the rest is history, I suppose. But yeah, there was just this little parkway between the two buildings. So it was easy to hop in and see each other all the time. But I'll do a separate video as well on how we moved to New York and the J1 visa, etc. So that will be coming. But we wanted to go and have a drink in our old local where we used to go out on a Friday night. But we fed some darts in here. I don't know how he managed this trick shot. But yeah, second dart kind of jammed into the first dart, which was a bit wild and a great way to start the year. But this, the Shannon, is our our little local. And this is him convincing me to try and come into the bar. Odd. Walk in the wedding. It's a frat boy bar. 
but it was so nice to come back and say this is like a nightclub area so usually they have no tables no nothing here and we just come here on a friday night uh until like two in the morning and party and have a good time with all of our flatmates and friends so yeah a lot of great memories in here and it's so nostalgic to come in and see it oh i love it and as well if you want to come visit hoboken there is the famous carlos beck shop which is on one of those tv channels quite famous and then we headed back into the city for a full day another local but in the city this is down the hatch which the boys used to always go to on a sunday for bottomless wings and beer but it is a very small bar but it has lots of tv lots of sport on all the time but yeah definitely get the wings and my idea of home is strand bookstore aka heaven I always have to come here every time I'm in New York, but it is the best bookstore in the city and it's widely known. But yeah, upstairs I ventured for the first time to the rare book room. Never been up here before, but they have a whole section dedicated to really rare and old books like first editions, early editions, and there's even I think a vault behind. I think you have to ask to be let in, it's all kind of cordoned off, but really cool to come up and see this. And of course, what's coming to New York not having a Levain cookie, but I've never seen the queue this long. It was insane, but it did go very fast because people are just getting cookies and then leaving again. And we did queue up naturally to get one. We headed to the Bakeman Hotel because I've always wanted to come here and see this. Like it looks insane inside and like sit down and have a coffee, but they were getting ready for their New Year's Eve party that night. So it was completely closed but we did manage to come in and just take a look and see it, but would love to come back here. And then for New Year's Eve night, we went and had a 12 sushi course meal. And yeah, it was so good, so filling, really cool to see them how they make it. And honestly, some of the tastiest sushi I've ever had in my life. It was insane, I would so recommend. And a really nice way to spend the last night of 2023. And then we came back and watched the Nashville New Year's Eve party on the TV and switched between Times Square ball drop and watched it all from our hotel room. Next morning we got up and went for a run on New Year's Day. What better way to start off the new year with a run along the West Side Highway. And it was wet, cold and a bit miserable at 8.30 in the morning, but really glad we did it. morning it is day three in new york now it's 10 30 a.m but we went for a run this morning because it is january 1st it is the first day of 2024 and we had an early night last night we watched the new year's eve from bed and yeah we went to sleep at like bang on 12 o'clock as soon as it was midnight went to bed because we knew we'd be getting up for a run this morning so we are doing the couch to 5k as i've mentioned i think before and we did yeah run this morning it was hard it was 8 30 a.m and it was cold but we did it and i'm glad we did it and i feel better for it so we're gonna go this morning to brooklyn bridge we're gonna take some photos and then we're gonna head up to Tompkins square bagels get a nice bagel this morning because we haven't had a bagel yet this trip and then we're going up to central park do some ice skating i've never ice skated in my life which is a bit petrifying and Hoping I don't break anything. But yeah, we're gonna go ice skating and then I think we're gonna head back over to Brooklyn again in the afternoon. And then this evening we're gonna go up the Rockefeller Center, which is a, basically a tradition at this point. Um, we go up on the first day of the new year up to the top of the rock and have a look at New York. So it's gonna be extra nice. But yeah, I'm excited for today. It's sunny, it was really foggy this morning and like quite cold, but it's definitely brightened up and it's very, very sunny this morning. So excited to get out and explore the city some more and yeah day three we have one more day tomorrow one full day tomorrow and then we're off wednesday but yeah excited to explore more of new york and i'll obviously take you along with me on everything we get up to today like i said it was a gorgeous day and it really brightened up with blue sky so we headed to the brooklyn bridge to take some lovely photographs as is always a must when you're in new york 
and then we headed towards Tompkins Square Bagels for breakfast and as a little reward for our run that morning. Pumpkin Square Bagels is probably one of the most popular bagel shops I would say in New York and it's found on the Lower East Side. This was actually my first ever time trying them but it has always been on my radar. The queue was very long but it did go very quick and the bagels were incredible. I went for my signature ham, tomato and avocado toasted on sesame while himself went for a bacon, egg and cheese and this steam coming off this, it smelled delicious and honestly so so good. Then we headed up to Central Park to Woolman Rink for my first ever time ice skating and you will see that there is no footage because I lasted all of 5 minutes on the ice clinging to the side. Would not recommend Woolman Ice Rink for your first ever time ice skating, I was too afraid to fall. But we had a lovely time walking around Central Park and enjoying the views, it was a gorgeous day and I just love Central Park so much. We left the park on the Upper East Side to go to the Carlisle Hotel, a very, very famous hotel loved by Jackie O. I went and sat in Beemelman's Bar and had a few drinks and also wrote our 2024 goals for the year, which you can see on my blog and I have also done a podcast episode. But yeah, a really nice spot to do some goal writing. And then I had my first ever Blank Street coffee, which was very nice to keep me warm as we walked around the Upper East Side. Then we met our way to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, where we were having dinner. Amaza Cafe is a little hidden gem in Williamsburg on Grand Street. They had live music playing, live jazz while we ate, and we had some sea trout tartare as a starter. And honestly, we shared a dish and it was so huge. It was so filling. And then I had some pork ragu while himself went for the chicken parmageddon and honestly two massive bits of breaded chicken on top of vodka pasta a feed an absolute feed and then we ended the night on top of the rock at 9 30 i think this is the new ride on top of the rock it's that iconic picture of the men that built top of the rock so you can also have that little iconic picture on the top of the building but yeah whether you want to spend the money and do it because you're sitting beside randomers up to you but a really nice way to spend the first night of 2024 looking all over New York City and basically a tradition at this point. It is day four, three, four? Yeah, four, day four. And it is our last full day in New York, which is very, very sad. Um, but 
we're off like this morning for a full day ahead so it's been good i am going to get my tattoo topped up just to make it a little bit darker it's been i think like six months now since i got it done and it's just faded a little bit so i want to get it a bit more to find a little darker i'll show you if you remember i got it done you see it's very faint so i want to get it a bit darker um and then we're going to go on a momo food tour so we're going to go on a little like crawl of momos around flushing and queens i think different areas of there just to taste a lot of different momos get some nepalese food which i'm very excited about and then i think we're quite open we're plans wise the rest of the day so yeah not really sure what we'll get up to but i'm sure it'll be fun and i'll bring you along as always anyway um but yeah it's a really gorgeous day too it's very sunny but it's gonna be cold but i got my scarf on so yeah let's go there's view it is so sunny today you see soho beautiful and then the edge over there in the corner stunning one thing if i'm walking through soho i can never pass up the chance to go into the glossier store i absolutely love it here i am yet to go to the one in covent garden london because it's just so busy but the one in new york is always really pleasant and nice and quite spacious as well but we were heading to flushing in queens for our dumpling crawl as i mentioned and oh the food we had this day was insane so we started off in NY Go Go Fast Food Inc for their pork buns and I think it was like three dollars for four pork buns and they were steaming hot, they were so tasty, incredible. I could eat these all day. Then we headed to White Bear and honestly, I was not prepared to have the best dumplings of my life on the side of the street. So it's literally a hole in the wall. You go up and order. It was these number six, the spicy wontons for I think $10 and you got around 12 dumplings. And oh my God, I could live on these forever. I would move to Flushing just so I could have access to these all the time. I don't know what was on top of them, but insane. Oh, it's making my mouth water even just thinking about them. Then we headed on to Shanghai New Garden for their Peking duck. It was $2.50 for just one Peking duck bao bun. And you can tell by himself trying to, <laughs> trying to eat it. It was quite tough, so yeah. It wasn't the best we've ever had. And then our last stop on the dumpling crawl was Nan Zhang Zhao Long Bao, where it was a Michelin recommended restaurant and famous for their soup dumplings. So we had the pork soup dumplings and they were sensational. And it was quite nice to be in a sit down restaurant, but it just didn't give that flushing vibe. I'm more used to the hole in the wall side of the street. And then we headed back to Jackson Heights in Queens. And this is still Queens, but a completely different area, different vibe completely. Lots of Nepalese restaurants here, so we had come for momos. There is a momo call you can do here, but we kind of filled ourselves up on the dumplings, unfortunately, but we did make room for one. So you can see there's just lots of Nepalese restaurants around in the one area. So we came here to Bansha Gar, and it was quite quiet, it was quite nice, but very homely, still very festive, even though Christmas is over. It's himself trying to act like we were still in Marrakesh and failing. We had some of this sweet bread with like a cold salsa and yeah, it was quite hot. had the momos and honestly so good like these are perfect for a cold winter's day or if you're feeling ill and you just want some warmth and some comfort food so tasty and they're the winners of so many momo crawls as well for so many years in a row then we headed back to lower manhattan and this is where i used to commute every single day that is the path train i used to get the path here every day to go to work so it was quite nice to be back 
that's my old office and I would have sat on the 11th floor, so on the bottom. There she is, where I used to go to work every day, right next to One World Tree is. Then it was time for more book shopping. Uh, this is a bookstore I've never went to, even though it was literally around the corner from my old work. But it's the mysterious bookshop that only sells like mis mysteries and like crime thriller novels. It was a very fun concept and a gorgeous bookstore. Like I love the ladders. They had leather sofas. Really, really nice store. And the people working there obviously knew their stuff as well. Like any recommendations you would want, they were so helpful. I picked up a Freedom McFadden book, which is my first book of 2024. And then we came back to get changed before heading back out again on a pizza crawl. Yes, we hadn't ate enough that day. So we headed to Prince Street Pizza first for a slice. We just shared slices the whole way around. Just, we couldn't go to New York and not have a New York slice. So we stopped at Prince Street Pizza first. This is my first time having Prince Street and it was really, really nice. A lovely thing about all of these pizza, pizza stores is they always have pictures of famous people that have come in and had a slice. So it's quite fun just to have a look around. Then Linda Street has just opened up a spot on the West Village. You'll find this in Brooklyn. I'll link my Brooklyn vlog we had last year, but Linda Street is so, so good. And it was very popular, very busy when we went as well. But yeah, Linda Street is one debate. Next on the list was Blicker Street Pizza. This fun fact was my first ever New York slice back in 2019 after a night out in New York on like my second day of being in the city. So it was quite nostalgic for me and really good pizza slice. They actually started cutting our pizza slice in half when we got to these stores so it was quite nice and easy to share. And of course the final stop on the pizza tour was Joe's Pizza because it is the best, it's always been known as the best and there's a reason for it. Had to be Joe's to end the trip. And then for old time's sake, we went for a drink in Off the Wagon, another regular haunt of ours on McDougal Street, before calling it a night and packing up because we were leaving New York and heading to Nashville, Tennessee the next morning. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I'll have the Nashville vlog up very, very soon. I'm very excited to edit this. But yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe if you're new.